All right, let's dive into the analgesics in dentistry. We're going to look over the classifications of the analgesics, the cyclooxygenase and prostaglandins role in analgesia, the NSAIDs, just brief with their drugs, actions, and side effects, acetaminophen, and opioids classification. Welcome all my tooth doctors and doctresses at the Tooth Factory. Today, we're going to learn about the analgesics used in dentistry. Just a brief overview. Get your pens and papers out and let's go. Make sure you like, share and subscribe for upcoming videos. Stay tuned. The analgesics used in dentistry are further classified into three different sections. Non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, also known as NSAIDs, acetaminophen and opioid analgesics. Now. NSAIDs are further divided into COX-1, which is cyclooxygenase 1, and cyclooxygenase 2 blockers, and acetaminophen blocks cyclooxygenase number 3. Now, before we get into all this detail, let me take this moment to explain what cyclooxygenase has to do with pain. First, we need to understand what ercodonic acid cascade means. It is a process through which prostaglandins are synthesized. Let me explain. Upon tissue damage, COX-2 is stimulated, or from ergodonic acid, lipooxygenase COX-1 and COX-2 can be stimulated. When lipooxygenase is, leukotrienes are produced, which are responsible for bronchospasms and inflammations. Now this is when anaphylactoid reactions kick in, that some drugs provide as side effects. When COX-1 is in action, prostaglandins and thromboxanes are produced. Prostaglandins are associated with gastric protection, uterine contraction, renal function, and thromboxanes are associated with platelet aggregation. It means that prostaglandins will help in protection and normal functions of the body. Thromboxanes will create platelet plugs during excessive bleeding. COX-2, when it's stimulated by either ergodonic acid or tissue damage, Prostaglandins or prostacyclines are produced, which are then responsible for certain processes such as pain, inflammation, and renal functions during such emergencies. Now that we know the functions of COX-1 and 2, it'll be easy to understand the NSAIDs. The COX-1 blockers from NSAIDs will act as acetyl salicylic acid, propionic acid derivatives, acetic acid derivatives, alkanoic acid derivatives or oxycams. These drugs will block the prostaglandin and thromboxane productions. Therefore, no longer will they have gastric protection or uterine contraction. They will not maintain renal function and they will definitely not create platelet plugs. The celecoxib from COX-2 is the only safest drug available of the category. The others were withdrawn from the market due to cardiovascular damage. They will protect us from pain, inflammation, and also won't maintain any renal function. That is how they create their effects. Let's take a deeper look into these drugs. NSAIDs at COX-1 includes acetyl salicylic acid, which includes aspirin, propionic acid derivatives, which is ibuprofen, naproxen, flurbuprofen, naproxen sodium, and ketoprofen, and so forth. Although ibuprofen and naproxen, naproxen sodium, are used successfully today. Acetic acid derivatives includes indomethacin, salindac, diclofenac sodium, ketorolac, and so forth. Although diclofenac sodium and ketorolac are common nowadays. Alkanoic acid derivatives includes nabumetone, oxycams, paroxicam, miroxicam. Now these drugs, not so much common. Although all of their actions are pretty common, such as their therapeutic effects includes analgesia, we know how, anti-inflammatory, we also know how, antipyretic, it is another sign of inflammation to increase the temperature due to prostaglandin production, that these drugs reduce. Anti-dysmenorial, which means uterine contractions are blocked. So pain during menstruation or labor can be stalled. Although antiplatelet activity, specifically of aspirin, is one to worry. As platelet aggregation is stopped, 
bleeding continues and it can lead to some fatalities and some serious damage. The adverse effects, moving on to that, causes dyspepsia, gastric mucosal damage. This is because no longer there is gastric protection. Increased bleeding, again, platelet aggregation, possible renal impairment, again, renal function is not maintained, and anaphylactoid reaction coming back to this. Now, since COX-1 or COX-2 are blocked, there will be an increase in production of the leukotrienes, which will lead to bronchospasms, which make it seem like it is an anaphylaxis. Hence, anaphylactoid reactions. Let's take a step ahead to acetaminophen, which blocks the COX-3 in the CNS. Now, this is important. The central nervous system carries COX-3. Therefore, there is no gastric, no renal, no platelet function in here. There is pyresis. Therefore, acetaminophen is responsible for analgesic effects and antipyretic effects. But the adverse effects includes hepatotoxicity, as it can induce acute liver failure. This drug occupies the liver at a high amount and therefore it cannot process any other metabolism. It is preferred over aspirin if the patient is asthmatic, if the patient has a risk of ulcer, experiencing bleeding, is on anticoagulants, or is allergic to penicillin. This drug can be replaced in terms of aspirin. Although, just one reminder, no anti-inflammatory effect for acetaminophen. Just a brief overview about the opioid analgesics. There are four different categories. Opium alkaloids, which includes morphine and codeine. They are naturals. Synthetic derivatives includes hydrocodone and oxycodone in the codeine group. Hydromorphone and oxymorphone and nalbufen in the morphine group. They're synthetic derivatives. The synthet synthetic narcotics, they include meperidine, naloxone, fentanyl, sufentanyl. These drugs are primarily used before a general anesthesia or sedation or pain control. These are very heavy. The last two of the list are methadone and propoxyphen. These drugs are also powerful and can be used in replacement of morphine or codeine. So just a heads up at the checklist, the classification of analgesics is clear. The COX and the prostaglandins function is very important in understanding the functions of all the NSAIDs, acetaminophen or opioids. The NSA drug side effects actions we covered and acetaminophen and opioids we looked at at a brief. Hope you learned something new and keep an eye out for the next.